In this session, we're gonna look at working with the GUI interface. We're gonna look at and focus in on text boxes. So once again, we're gonna use the text tool, but when we open up the text tool and click on the stage, we've actually got different types of text we can have. We can have static text, dynamic text, and input text. Each of them serves a purpose. Static text is like a label. We can't associate any code with a static text label. So we use those to actually label text boxes and things like that. Dynamic text is the text boxes we use when we want to give something back to the user. So when we want to give a result to the user, we put that out through as dynamic text. The other type of text box is input text box. So this text box is when we want to get something from the user. So if I want to take in a word from the user, I'm going to start by using input text box. So this is, this is going to sit on screen. I can stretch them around. One of the most critical things you need to use, make sure that your anti-aliasing is set to use device fonts. That way you're using the fonts off your computer and not one from a list. Sometimes that will cause you an error in your compiling. Another thing you may want to use is this um, show border. If I don't use the show border and turn that off, and by default it is turned off, when you run your program, you can't actually see where the text box is. As you float through, your cursor will change to show you where the area is. But without the border turned on, so now when I turn the border on and compile that again with the command editor, now I can easily see where that text box is. So what we have now is a input text box on screen. Once you've created the space, you can adjust the font, the font color. Um, there's alignment and a few other little things under paragraph. So your alignment, if you want it centered, etc. So I'll just center this one for the time being. Um, you need to go up and give it an instance name. Instance names are important. I can have multiple text boxes, input text boxes on screen. But if I don't give them an instance name, which text box am I talking to? So the aim is to make sure that everything is labeled on the GUI. To label a text box, we use TXT. And we use the Hungarian notation, which is TXT, and also we're using camel case. So we go input box. So every word after TXT, every word starting after that has a capital. Now, this will actually get information. So this will allow me to talk directly to this text box. So I can actually get the information from the text box, and I can write back to the text box by using its name called TXT input box. So let's go and put a label on screen. Now, because I've got the text box selected and the tool selected at the moment, every time I click, it's going to carry those properties across that I just had. So in this case here, I want to change this one to be a label. So I'm going to go back to static text. Uh, I don't want, you notice the border's turned off that now. So I'm just giving it a label. I can change the color of this. You've got to select it much the same as you do when you're word processing. And I can turn it to any color I like. And then I can move it into place. And I'm going to let it overhang slightly in. See how the input box is overhanging? And you can see that little overhang there. So now what I've got is a label on screen and I've got a text box. Now the label doesn't have an instance name, but the text box does. Now, if I'm gonna have an output text box, I'm gonna use the text tool because it's already set up. I'm gonna go to static text again and go output. And notice how it's carried the same font size, etc. across. I'm just gonna move that into position now. I just wanna line this up a little bit better. Okay, I can copy and, play, uh, and copy and paste a text box and move that down. Now once again, I'm gonna move it up so the, the P sort of floats in, or because of the layering it's not at the moment. And I'm gonna change that to dynamic. So now this is a dynamic text box. Now because I've copied and pasted the previous one, notice that the instance name's also been copied. So I need to change that to output. So now I've been the output text box. Now the only thing I need to do now is place on screen a trigger. So I need my components, so you can get that by Windows and selecting components, and then opening the folder, 
for user interface. And I'm just going to grab the button out, drag that, and drop it on stage. And then closing that down. And then I can select the button. I can give it a, a label, like Start. And I can also give it an instance name such as BTN. Start. So I've actually now prepared my GUI ready to write some code. Okay, what you do now, it's really easy. What you do, you go up here and this layer now just goes GUI and this layer now goes AS3 and I just drag AS3 above G GUI and it's all good. So at the moment, everything on my GUI is labeled, everything's placed out there, so I'm pretty confident now just to give you an idea, and we didn't get to that part in the video, I can come into an input box and I can write Marsden in there, okay? I go down to the output box, I can't actually get a cursor in there. Because that output box is actually dynamic. It won't allow me to type in it. And the start button does its little start button trick. But it doesn't do anything because there's no code associated with that. 